creating art's been something I've been doing for my whole life. Um, starting probably the first time I ever saw an Alexander, an, uh, a Calder show at the Guggenheim Museum. I was completely taken with the, with the work. It was the, one of the earliest exhibitions of the circus and went there with my parents, we walked around. I can still remember the different pieces in the circus and I went back home and started making things out of wire. I had been building welded steel sculptures. The teacher who was teaching it was a guy by the name of uh, Paul Aschenbach. And one day he said, listen, I'm working on a show in, for a gallery in New York called the Sculpture Center. And I need some uh, people to help me out. It's marble, but you know, why don't you come out? And he had a big studio out in a place called Chalat, Vermont. And he said, well, this is what I want you to carve. And I figured, why not? So I started carving. And what I remember most of that day was the rhythm of the carving. And the stone just began to move. Every time you hit the stone, you could feel this energy being released from it. And then the other thing that I noticed was that my carving was to the rhythm of the music that we were listening to. And I just became fascinated with the medium. But for me, the stone was just an incredible eye opener. I just loved the medium. He began a group called Sculpture in the Community. Sculpture in the Community was a project where we would get commissions and then we would fabricate them on location and it was a teaching opportunity for the kids because we worked with schools quite often and we'd live in a community anywhere from two weeks to six weeks building these large sculptures. Um, that opened up another set of doors because the way it worked out was that anyone who found the commission, everybody would participate in building it and I think that there were five of us at that point working on sculpture in the community and that opened up the opportunity for me to build my first um, public sculpture, which was at a place called South Burlington Middle School. And it was uh, uh, eight interlocking pieces of marble sitting on an eight foot plinth in front of the school. And the piece was sort of about, was about the geological history or what formed the surfaces of Vermont. So there were valleys and snowdrift forms and marble pieces that started on the ground and then rolled over to the top of the, uh, of the uh, stone plinth. And that was the first big piece I ever did. What started working, me working with paper was somebody giving one of my kids a gift that didn't know my kids, which was a small paper making kit. And one rainy Saturday, I said, hey guys, let's go make paper. And so we took the kid out and we started making paper. And I got fascinated with making paper. And about three and a half hours later, I was still making paper. The paper is sort of a, a fascinating medium. Um, and once I started working with it, I began to think of you know, what the possibilities were for using it. I loved the speed with which I could develop ideas in paper. Um, it was so different from building hard sculpture, metal, wood, stone. The way that I work with paper tends to be I work with a thick pulp and I use multiple materials in it. I've used wood in the pa mixed into the paper, I've used mica mixed into the paper, I've used stone mixed into the paper. And the thing that I love about it is that I finish it and then I allow the, the piece to dry. And as it dries, all these different things happen. Paper like, is chameleon-like in some ways because when you start with it, it's, it's molten, it's liquid. And then all of a sudden, as you work with it and you reduce the water content, 
it changes and it, there's a point in time where you can no longer change it. It becomes what it is. The ideas of the furrows just began driving out to, uh, to Long Island. I'd always looked at it and I always was fascinated by it. You know, that the vanishing points that go with, you know, with these, with a cur and plowed fields. I want to take pictures of this. And after that day, I just continually stopped and I saw the, the patterns that, that formed and I just found them to be fascinating. And somewhere along the line, I started doing uh, small scale models out of wood. Even though the lines look straight when you're looking at the vanishing point, the reality is, is that the forms themselves are not, it's not what it is. And I started looking more closely and then began to look at the negative spaces that existed between the plowed earth as it fell. I said I continued to work and then I began working on a large scale piece which and that was uh, made out of slabs of, of wood that I then painted with uh, graphite based oil paint. Sometimes the hardest thing is making the first decision with the piece. And in its own way, it's, they become, the decisions are arbitrary, but it's like the first line you draw. In this particular case, it's the first place I put the paper. 